guys, welcome to Idolatry. I'm your host, Michaela Gordon, and we're coming to you live from Beaches in West Hollywood. Put your hands together for DJ Lisa Pittman. What up, Michaela Gordon, my favorite American Idol. Thank you. Are you sad that this is the final episode? Oh my God, this season was amazing. We had superstars, every American Idol, that was my favorite. And then, who got to walk the red carpet last night? I did walk the red carpet, I don't wanna brag. We have had such an amazing week this week and I cannot wait to share everything with you from walking the red carpet at the finale to being able to talk to some of your favorite American Idol contestants. But we also got to talk to one of my favorites. Check out what Chris Daughtry had to say at his concert from Riverside, California last night. Hi guys, we are coming at you from Fox Theater in Riverside, California to talk to one of my favorite people. We're backstage at his concert before the show. Hi, Chris Daughtry. How are you? Um, okay, so let's talk. Because one thing I think it's important that people know is you had such a good career before American Idol. You were in bands, you were making music, you had already I wouldn't call it a out. career. Well, what made you do Idol? Because you were organically headed into a direction where you were gonna have a successful band. I, I did my research and I listened to all those songs. Thank you. I think uh, I think at the time, you know, this was way before like YouTube and all that was really yeah. Um, a great tool for people to use to get their music out there. So at that time, it just felt like we were spinning wheels, like we were playing for the guest list over and over. And I was a little uh, reluctant at first because that's not the rock way to do things, you know, going on TV. And uh, but I finally was like, for lack of better terms, fuck it, let's see what happens. And had no idea it was gonna take me around the world. So kind of went into the acting world for a second when you debuted yeah. as Judas yeah. in the Passion Live, and it was that so was... incredible. When you did that Evanescence Thank tune, you. my Thank God, you. your voice is just so ridiculous. Thank you. Especially live, it's so good. Thank you so much. Can we see more of you in acting? I want to. Um, you know, I did, uh, that was right after I had done a pilot for Fox as well uh, with uh, Heather Graham and Eric McCormick, oh, and I was wow. so, I was so excited. I thought that was gonna be my, you know, my ticket into into acting world, but um, it didn't get picked up ultimately. But uh, it was so much fun, and I kind of caught the bug a little bit. Y'all hear that? Get my guy on TV as an actor, okay? Because this is he was in the Wiz. He's you hear that? Uh, makeup. <laughs> He's been hustling. I was in the Wiz. <laughs> he was in the Wiz. <laughs> um, but I listened to Backbone, and then I looked up the lyrics because I always look up mm. lyrics. I, I I love lyrics, but it's pretty inspiring too. This past year or last two years I guess have just been hell on everybody it's just one bad news piece after another you know and uh, we were moving a lot and it was just everything felt hard um, I remember writing the song and I was going on Instagram and seeing like friends of mine out on vacation all the time and I'm just like oh it must be nice then you realize their life sucks too right yeah. like you, you realize that it's all you know relative and yeah. they're showing the good stuff mm -hmm. But everybody goes through hard times, you know, yeah. and you, and you know, no pun intended, but that was the backbone of the song. That was what spawned those lyrics. Are you going on tour? Is there anything you can give us about okay. what's going on? Give me it all. So backbone was just the tease for the record. Great. The new single's coming out in a couple weeks. Great. New record's coming out this summer. I don't have a date yet. When is it I do it have coming? it. I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. I'll tell you when they cut the camera. Can we expect to have the same vibe as the other records, or is this kind of a new thing? I think Backbone is certainly more indicative of where this record is. It's it's certainly more of a rock record than the last record. Wow. I'll, I'll say that. This is interesting, because every week we do a special tea cocktail with Jack Daniels, who sponsors us, and we love Jack Daniels. But you love Jack Daniels. I mean, I literally drink it on stage every night. This was a match made. Yeah, I said I need match to get the here. bottle out. Well, let's do a straight let's do shot. This. We're rock stars, yes, baby. We don't mess around here. You are on the fake rock star. Here we go. Cheers. Thank you to Jack Daniels for an amazing season. Cheers to an amazing show tonight. Cheers to you. Can't wait to Thank see you out Yes. Yeah! Woo! <laughs> Ugh, I had so much fun with Chris Daughtry, but it's all fun and games until you start taking shots at Jack. I had one, and girl, she was feeling it. I'm not a rock star like Chris Daughtry. 
I would also like to say, Backbone sounds so much better live in person. He's one of the best live singers I've ever heard. It was so good. Now speaking of live shows, we also got the opportunity Sunday night to walk the red carpet and talk to some of your favorite American Idol contestants, including the judges, on how they felt that entire performance and the season went. Check out what they had to say, because we got the exclusive. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, hey, didn't see you there. We're just uh, behind the scenes at American Idol walking the red carpet with other celebrities and interviewing celebrities we've talked about all season. What? I don't know. Did I create a show? Yeah. Are we really famous now? Yeah. So uh, get in line. I'm a big deal. I wanted to know maybe if there's any other advice that you could give for the viewers that are watching. Well, the, for me, I just always say that authenticity is it. You must, first of all, love this business to death. If you don't love it, then it's not going to happen. Who were the contestants that you were close to that maybe you felt should have stayed a little bit longer? Oh, Katie. Of course. Yeah, hashtag Katie. It was my favorite. Katie Turner is my absolute number one favorite. I haven't really been able to let things sink in because we're moving so fast here. It's a whole nother world. You're doing stuff constantly every single minute. Right. It's very emotional, very everything. I truly have cried so much this whole week just because I just can't. I just can't even believe that I'm here. You know, I really enjoyed these three contestants. There were some that I were closer to than others, but these three I all genuinely liked, and so I was happy to see them all here. I think tonight they felt the pressure. I think they felt the pressure of the three songs. You know what it's like to be up there looking at those judges. To watch them recover and do rounds two and three in the way that they did is good. People were loving you back home. How did it feel to have all that support? It felt really good. I think going home was definitely a kick in the butt that I needed. It was really sinking in that, wow, people are like really behind me. Seeing everybody show so much support and just so much love towards you and knowing that they're backing you. That was such a good feeling. I think everybody needed that, going back home and getting that, you know, that boost. I don't know how it's going to go. It was very tight last week between a couple of them. So we'll see. Can we say we love Maddie? And we, she might win this show. Well, I can say that these boys won't give. Go, won't well, give we won't. We won't they up. won't give their vote up. But um, I love Maddie, and she might win the show. Well, I love you. Thank you so Thank much. You so Thank much. you. Oh my gosh, it was so much fun on the red carpet, and honestly, it was so nostalgic for me. It feels like going home every time, being a former Idol contestant, and seeing all those familiar faces. And we love Maddie Poppy, I'm so happy she won. But let's talk about the entire finale. Here joining me is one of my best friends from season seven, David Hernandez. How you doing, baby? How you doing, baby? Look handsome. Well, thank you, you look beautiful. I almost wore the same exact dress. I know, and I had to be very careful Who inviting you on this show. <laughs> <laughs> Now tell me, how did you feel about last night's finale? Our winner, Maddie Poppy. I thought it was amazing. You know, it's always nostalgic seeing the finale of Idol because obviously we were both on the finale and it's just cool. I, I can only imagine the excitement that they feel and it just takes you back to those moments where we were on that same stage and I'm super happy for Maddie and everybody. I mean, the top the top 10 in general, it's just it's been incredible. One of my top <laughs> favorite moments last night was Katy Perry with Katy Turner. I wanted Katy Turner to win. Yeah. The entire season. You, you did. That. Yeah, you said it a few weeks ago. You, are, you were obsessed yeah, with her. I'm yeah. obsessed, and part of me was so beautiful. I love the breakdown. I feel like Katy Perry did such an amazing job letting her shine, yeah. letting her be the star. I really loved um, Michael and Yolanda singing together. Yolanda Adams is one of my favorite gospel singers, so to hear them do that together, I mean, he's a little star, you know, so he, he's fantastic. I, I loved everything Gabby's done. Um, yeah, it's. I mean, I was shocked to see her not win because she was kind of pitted to be the one. Yeah, um, I kind of so felt that kinda, way too. Cool. I kind yeah. of did. When we were doing our interviews on the red carpet, we had talked to Bobby Bones, as you saw earlier, and he predicted that Gabby Barrett was going to yeah, win. Yeah, everybody did. Yeah. What do you think happened? You know, it's so unpredictable. You know, I mean, obviously America votes, and that's the idol that they wanted. And it, what's cool is that, as you know, it doesn't matter if you win or if you're runner up or if you're yeah. seventh, like Jennifer Hudson, you can still be super successful and, and make it in this business. So. You know, they have the platform and they have social media, which we didn't have totally. on our season. I so uh, you that. could just literally, like, you know, take the wheel by yourself. Jesus, Jesus, take the wheel! Jesus, take the wheel! I think I might write that song. Yeah. <laughs> didn't she win your season? That's enough. I know you won your season, didn't you? I won season four. Even though people will say Karen Underwood did, I won. I loved having you here, David. You're one of my best friends. Thank you so much. It was so great having you on a few weeks ago. Which and let's look back at all of the other contestants we had on this season of Idolatry, some of your favorite moments. Check it out. Who are you calling motherly? Sure. All right, and that's starting to it out. Hug it out. I came home to Lisa the other day, Lisa, my girlfriend, and I was like, do you want to have a rub? 
on this season of Idolatry. I can't even believe it. And there's so many people to thank. Thank you to Beaches in West Hollywood for giving us a place to live. Thank you to Jack Daniels. Thank you to the best damn crew you could ever find. Hi guys, behind the scenes. You can't see them, but they're so cute. And some of them are single, just throwing that. He has a Tinder. Put your hands together. Thank you, thank you to DJ Lisa Pittman on the ones and twos. Thank you to all of our celebrity guests and American Idols. Thank you to American Idol. We've had such an amazing time. Remember, if you're drinking, don't drive. Let Jesus take the wheel. I'm your host, Michaela Gordon, and we'll see you next season.